Good afternoon and welcome to the Friday edition of the St. Mark Spark. My name is Pastor MP and along with my colleague, Pastor Dave Burgess, we send greetings and blessings to you and your families. The St. Mark Spark is part of a broad uh, attempt to communicate with you via regular mail, telephone services, and also with electronic communication. So we realize that um, this is a work in progress and we thank you for your grace as we continue working out any bugs that we have. And as we move forward, we've heard you and we are working on making sure that we also let you know when these things are gonna happen in enough advanced time that we can have you join us. Um, it's important to make sure that we do that. Even if we don't get to tell you about it uh, or you don't see it, these videos are going to be saved and reposted on our St. Mark Bulletin Board as well as on the St. Mark uh, Facebook page, Discover St. Mark. So thank you again for uh, joining us on, these, on this journey, this new and crazy time. And speaking of the new and crazy time, here we are. I am in my office and I am in the church all by myself at this point, uh, pretty much. There's no parishioners here. Um, the office staff is, is working from home when we can do that to try and keep each other safe. And it seems like it's been already a month. It, it's only been five or six days or maybe eight days and, and not quite 14 days since we had a church service last but we miss each other. Um, I miss seeing your faces. I miss talking with you. And it's important that we continue to uh, stay in touch. So thank you again for joining us. The social distancing, distancing thing is, is a kind of crazy, right? We, as human beings, crave being in community and we are healthier and happier when we are together, when we can see each other's expressions, when we can shake each other's hands, and when we can reach out and i'm a hugger so if you know that about me i am craving these hugs and so this day i send out a virtual i get this camera down a virtual hug to you and uh, know that you are being thought of and prayed for i went online today and i looked up i actually went to healthline.com and i looked up what does it mean or how does it help to get hugs and that social physical connection and according to the folks at healthline we need eight hugs just to sort of survive just to be healthy and happy on a daily basis in order to grow we need 12 of those hugs every single day and i know that when i'm here on sunday mornings i selfishly go around scooping up hugs all over the place so that I can be healthy and happy and can grow in God's love through the folks that are around me and the arms that surround me. And since we're not able to do that, it can feel pretty lonesome. Hugs are proven to make you feel healthier, to be healthier. It's proven to make you happier, to reduce stress and all sorts of other things. And so what do we do when we can't be with one another what are we holding on to when we can't hold on to one another like in a hug and i was thinking back to a time uh, just a few years ago uh, about five years ago uh, my mom died and she was in the hospital for a couple days at that time and then in her room at the the nursing care facility and one of the things that I remember my mom holding on to, and I've got a picture here. This is, I don't laugh because this was a few years back, uh, 2012. That's uh, me, and that was my mom when she was at home uh, visiting with us uh, for a, a few hours or a day. One thing my mom held on to, and she asked us to do this with her repeatedly, was to recite the Lord's Prayer our Father which art in heaven. It was something that she memorized, that she held on to, that she knew from church, that gave her love, that gave her hope, 
and her family knew it also. And so we recited it together over and over. Anytime mom wanted to hear it, wanted to do it, we prayed. And my mom held on to that. And I think in that holding on to, we all felt better. We all felt more loved. We all felt um, connected in some way that goes beyond a normal connection of, of a hug or just being in the same room. Something that I am holding on to right now, and I physically have it in my hands, is this, I'll get it out of my face here, this set of praying hands that I bought uh, last summer or two summers ago when I was in Tennessee. And I remember my mom having a set of these praying hands sitting in the house somewhere when I was a kid. Uh, I think my brother has them now. But when I see these in my office, when I physically am hanging on to them, I think of my mom. And I think of that recite, recitation of the Lord's Prayer and how we were brought together over our faith and over having God to hold on to. So I'm asking you today, what can you hold on to or what are you holding on to as we can't physically be together to hold on to one another? Got a little prayer here for us. It's from... Oh, I forgot to write down who it was from, but it goes this way. Alone with none but you, my God, I journey on my way. What need have I to fear when you are near, O King of night and day? More safe am I within your hand than if a host did around me stand. It's beautiful. I'm going to post that prayer on the comments after this broadcast. In the prayer, it talks about fear. And right now is a fearful time in many, many ways. We're separated. We're isolated. We can't go out. We're quarantined at home. We keep hearing the media talk about crazy numbers that, though real, we hear them over and over again. They, they make our anxiety go get higher and higher. We're running around trying to buy Purell and sanitizer and trying to figure out ways to make it at home from other things. And uh, we don't want to go out. We walk by someone and they cough and we give them a funny look, um, wondering, do they have this crazy virus? We don't know how long it's going to last. Our kids are home from school. We're working from home, many of us. Those of us who can't be at home or have family members who can't be at home, we're fearful for them. They're out in the workforce. Our firefighters, our nurses, our doctors, our paramedics, those who are taking care of us while we're staying at home. It's a fearful time. I posted a post on my Facebook page uh, this morning or last night from a pastor. Her name is Nadia Boltz Weber. And I am not going to repeat what she said. You can go and look at it for yourself, but she speaks about fear. And rather than, she's a, a pastor, ordained pastor, rather than speaking about how we should be not fearing, as the Bible says over a hundred times, Jesus says, do not fear. It's hard. We hold on to that, but it's hard not to be fearful. And so one thing that we can do while we're holding on to hope is be, re be realistic about where we are. We don't need to hide it. It's okay. And the Psalms are a place where we can find many times when David or the psalmist cries out to God, where are you, God? I feel like I'm all alone. So Psalms might be a place you can go find something to hold on to. And here's just one part of Psalm 32, verses 20 through 22. We put our hope in the Lord. God is our hope and our shield. Our heart rejoices in God because we trust God's holy name. Lord, let your faithful love surround us because we wait for you.
So maybe you can find something, whether it be a set of praying hands, a memory, a picture, a prayer, something out of the Psalms that you can latch onto and make it your daily recitation, your daily thing that you go to, to hold on to. So I'm going to close and wish you well. We are having our Sunday service. Um, I want to say it's 1030 on Sunday. We're videotaping it this weekend. It will go live on Sunday morning. So watch for that. And as you go out today, here is my wish for you. God's deep peace of the running wave be with you. God's deep peace of the flowing air be with you. God's deep peace of the quiet earth be with you. Deep peace of the shining stars be with you. And the deep peace of the sun of peace be with you now and always.